Hello everyone and welcome back to Know Nothing Garage. My name is Jacob and today I have, I think the channel's first woodworking type project. My father-in-law asked me if I could build one of those exercise boxes, like a plywood box, um, to do like stair stepping and jumping and all of that on. Um, and so I was like, sure, why not? It can't be that difficult. Um, he even sent me plans from online. Um, I think it was Art of Manliness or somewhere. Has plans already pre-made um, on how to do this out of a single sheet of plywood. So I was like, well, I'm up for that challenge. Um, so let me show you guys what the supplies are and uh, we'll get started. All right, well, I got some supplies here. Um, so we can go ahead and start off. Um, first of all, you're going to need a four by eight foot sheet of plywood. Um, this is three quarter inch. Um, these plans don't have any type of like frame or bracing um, in the box. It's all just plywood. Um, and so you want to get the thicker plywood for that. Um, at Home Depot or wherever you buy it from, they do cuts for free um, just to make it easy to transport. So this is a four by four section. And then over here, I have another four by four section. Um, so with these plans, you can easily um, cut out all of these pieces on one sheet of plywood. So as far as tools and supplies, this thing is basically assembled with two inch, screws and wood glue um, according to the plans that's it so we will see if that truly is enough something that makes this easier uh, a right angle a square um, that's helpful pencil a tape measure of course and then you also need like a flat um, piece of bar in order to do um, lines on. So you can see I already started some lines. So I'm gonna show you kind of how I did that. Um, the other thing that's very helpful is I am a very visual learner. And so in order to start this, I actually did something kind of ridiculous. I'll show you this on my phone. On the carpet in the, I used tape and I actually drew a four foot by eight foot box. And then within it, I measured out all the different pieces I was gonna need. So you can see here, um, I even labeled them of what the measurements needed to be, how many inches, um, so that once I bought the piece of wood, it was as easy as referencing this and knowing exactly where to make my cuts. Um, I found this extremely helpful because every two pieces are different. There's two of each size. Um, actually, I can show you guys what each of the sizes are just so you guys have them so two pieces are 20 inches by 28 inches um, two pieces are 22 and a half by 18 and a half and then two pieces are 28 by 22 and a half um, but basically all you're going to want to do is i looked and i saw that my first pieces were 28 by 20 and i had two of them in a row um, so look at this like that. That is how I have this orientated right now. So since it's 20 inches and 20 inches, I basically just measured out, since it's 20 by 20, I basically measured out 40 inches one way um, and then made a mark. And then the other way I did 28 inches and I made a mark. Um, one thing that's important to note about this is blade thickness. I guess that's the one tool I didn't mention, but you're gonna need a saw, of course, to saw through this. <laughs> so blade thickness means if I'm going to cut a 28 inch piece here and then like an 18 and a half inch piece here, I'm gonna need to account for the fact that I'm gonna lose a little bit of material. So on this, I wanna cut out on the outside of the line. So I'm gonna cut to the left and then if I want to measure this out now, instead of measuring to 18 and a half inches, I might actually measure to like 18 and five eighths um, or 18 and even three quarters just to give myself enough material. And that basically will mean that when I cut this one, 
I'll be taking a quarter of an inch out of this side if that's my blade length with, it's probably more like an eighth of an inch. Um, and then when I make this cut, it should be perfect. So I'm not losing, cause otherwise the box will actually start to shrink. But if those same cuts don't happen on every piece, then you're gonna have pieces that aren't the right size. This is where the triangle is super helpful. Um, you can see over here, you basically just line up the line. Um, I'll flip this over so you can see it, but you basically just line it up and I drew a line and then I came in with the longer level. I lined it up and then I drew my line straight. So it's really as easy as just measuring out all of these pieces and then getting ready to, uh, to cut them. Okay guys, so you can see on this first one, I have all of my lines drawn out. Um, and, oh, this is important. This is an important note. You can see I scribbled the which pieces are which. 22.5. Okay, so that is just a quick and easy reference. Once these are cut out, I know which ones are which, um, it makes it a lot easier. This piece holds the four smallest pieces, and then the next one I actually only have to do two um, on, because obviously rectangles have six sides. So let's talk a little bit about tools to use. Okay, so we are going to play a game that I am now calling Good, Better, Best. Um, there are many different tools for doing jobs. Um, I'm gonna preface this by saying I don't have the best tools. Um, there's probably a couple levels I'm missing, so this is gonna be a good, better, best based on what I have. Um, I will tell you right now, probably the best tool you can use is a table saw, um, especially because I have a lot of straight long lines. That is by far gonna be the best option. I don't have a table saw, so I will show you my good, better, best. Okay. First tool you could use a regular good old wood saw. Um, this would work, it would be very long, you would be tired, um, you would have a tendency to veer off, um, which means a lot of like correction and sanding or filing would need to be done. So this is a, I, I guess I have to call that good tool, even though I will not be using this in this project. Better tool would be a jigsaw. You could use a jigsaw. Um, it would be much, much quicker than using the uh, just hand saw. Um, the problem with a jigsaw is you have to go very, very slow, otherwise it'll leave Ripley's. You'll quickly get off, you'll correct, you'll keep going, you'll think it looks fine, and then you get done, and it just looks atrocious. Um, so that is, an I guess better, it's still not great. <laughs> um, neither of these two would really be options for me, but if it's all you have, you could get this job done. A hand saw like this, um, a power saw is great. Um, it has a tendency to cut much straighter. Um, the other thing is, is in a shop this size, a garage where I'm limited on space, you can see my line is right here. Um, which means I can easily run this and stop and turn it off. And then I can pull out the piece of wood, I can come over to this line, I can run it and stop. So this is actually one of the best options to use for this, only because it's mobile and it's really easy to stop. Typically on a table saw, you're gonna have to make through cuts all the way. And so for a place, you can see this nice intersection, I have to come up to here and stop. I have to come to here and stop. Um, this is my only through line. So these are gonna be very difficult on a table saw. Um, so that's why the skill saw is actually gonna be a pretty great option for this. Um, other tools, 
is eventually I'm probably gonna round the edges with a sander. You can use sandpaper. Um, you could use a block sander. You can use an orbital sander or a belt sander. I mean, anything technically. I'm gonna be using an orbital sander and just quickly um, round the edges so they're not sharp or anything. Um, but those are gonna be the basic tools um, that you guys need for this project. All right, everyone, day two. Um, like I said, I took a break last night. We are ready to just jump right in. Everything's where I left it, so uh, let's go. guys so quick update I have four sides cut out and now I need to measure out and cut the last two sides um, some things I realized is I'm not very good with my skill saw um, all honesty this is the first time I've ever used it um, at least without adult supervision <laughs> aka my dad um, so it was a little tough to get used to um, the jigsaw I used a few times and it actually worked a lot better than I thought. Yeah, I have some lines that are a tiny bit wavy, um, but it's really easy to kind of trim those up and then I can use the sander later to um, kind of smooth them out and make sure they're all even. All right, guys. So I turned off the camera just because it took a little bit for me to figure some things out, but I'll show you. I just got the very last piece cut out. Uh, my last 28 inch by 22 and a half um, created quite a mess, which is awesome. This little skill saw did great. It definitely was struggling a little bit through this thicker plywood. Um, maybe it's just me not knowing how to use it very well, but either way, um, I got the last board completely cut out with that. Didn't have to use the jigsaw, um, so that was awesome. So now that that's done, we can uh, kind of begin to mock up how it's going to look. All right, guys, so for this phase of the project, I'm going to be test fitting the pieces up and then I'm going to be putting them together. Um, so the most important tools you are going to need for this part of the job is simply basically just wood glue and a drill with your screws. Um, that is it. One thing that would help make this project um, a lot easier is if you actually have two drills. So what you're gonna wanna do is actually pre-drill the ends um, to go into here. And what you'd really have to do is take out the drill bit, um, you know, pre-drill with the drill bit, take it out, put in the screwdriver bit, install it, and you'd have to keep doing that over and over again. So it's much easier just to have a second drill with the drill bit already in it. You can pre-drill with one, and then you can drive the screw in right behind. Um, so all you're really going to be doing, and I can show you with this piece, because I am about to um, put it together. All right, so all you are going to do is all right, day three, just got done with work for the day. So came out here, everything's kicking on cue. So that's cool. Um, I finished yesterday, my camera actually died. So I apologize for that. But basically um, I started gluing the sides up. I know that's what you saw, nothing really changed. Um, I had a little split right here, so I had to fix it. No big deal. Um, so basically all I need to do left is um, I will have to put this side up, but I believe this piece actually isn't glued or attached on the bottoms. So I'll unscrew the back of it and pop that panel off at some point, And then that'll be kind of my final panel that I glue on. Um, but the one thing I am going to have to do today is you can see how we have 
a little bit of overhang. Um, there's a few panels. You could see there's one right here. See right there, there's some overhang. So none of that can stay, <laughs> basically. So I am going to have to fix those. As you guys can see, I added the support inside, so that will put up a lot of abuse um, jumping on top of this thing, so that's good. Um, I do need to put this side up, but one of the first things that I want to do is I need handles of some kind, some way to grab it. Now, I could attach something to the outside really easy, um, but because technically this box could be put up on its side, um, you don't really want to have anything here because then if it's on the other side as well, it'll wobble. Um, so the easiest thing is to drill out a hole. All right, guys, so I got my handles cut. You can see both of them there. Um, easy to slip your fingers, then your fingers in and pick this thing up. Um, it's less than one sheet of plywood, maybe about two thirds of a sheet of plywood. So it's not too heavy, but um, it definitely, you wouldn't want to just try and carry it. It's awkward to carry without handles. So I'm glad that those are on there. Um, the last thing to do is put the last panel on, and then the very last step is just gonna be sanding all the corners and edges to make sure they're smooth and don't create new wobbles, but also um, aren't gonna give any splinters or anything. So that is kind of the final step. All right, guys, so the box is finished. Look at that, it is a plywood box. Um, <laughs> you can see you got my handles, so it is set, so I guess technically this isn't made for me, but it would probably be um, in my best interest to try it out first. All right, guys, well, you saw it worked. Even in jeans, I was able to make it up. Um, I also just finished cleaning everything. I'm sure you could see in clips, but all of this was just sawdust and uh, pieces of wood and all that. So that was a, a lot of cleaning. I still need a good amount of cleaning, but yeah, that is all. Um, that was a fun project. It was uh, interesting. I remember how messy woodworking is, um, a lot of sawdust, but also rewarding. Um, it's a cool box. It'll definitely serve its purpose. Um, and yeah, I'm kind of, I'm excited to give it to my father-in-law and see how, uh, how he's going to use it. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So thank you guys for watching. Um, if you enjoyed, please like, uh, leave me a comment down below of other projects you'd like to see and uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, thank you for watching and have a good day.